Who's there? Oh, hi. You're looking through a hidden camera, and what you're about to see is a man breaking the law. He's a salesman for a private vocational school that says it trains men to drive tractor trailers and heavy equipment, jobs for which there are no openings right now in the New York area. But this salesman's about to promise a salary and a union job to an undercover agent that he thinks is a prospective student. You'll get a job the minute he gets out of school. We'll place him. We can place him anywhere in the country. I mean, he'll get a job for sure in three weeks, though. Like a thing, uh, I don't know what he's doing. 250 and 300. 300 dollars? He has to get 250. Oh, let me explain it this way. Okay. He gets six dollars an hour, that's minimum. Now, if he works a 40 hour week, that's 240 right there. Most of the fellas work at least 10 hours overtime. That's where I get the 250 from because they have time and a half. That's it. Wow. I thought, like, um, you had to be in, in a union. He to gets, get after 30 days, he gets in the union. He gets in the Teamsters, 3 or 15. What you just saw may not have looked like a crime. Nobody was mugged or assaulted, no drugs changed hands, and nobody paid off on a number. But what you witnessed was the crime of false promise. That's a Class B misdemeanor here in New York, punishable by up to 90 days in jail or a $500 fine. Now, the law says that no job training school can guarantee its graduates a job, much less a specific salary. And to take a man's money while holding out the phony promise of future work is fraud under the laws of New York. I'm Geraldo Rivera, and tonight on Help, we focus our cameras on what's emerging as a major consumer fraud in Greater New York, the private vocational school ripoff. That and more of our friend here right after this. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, help me if you can, I'm feeling down. Now, in case you missed last week's show, I guess a sentence of background's in order. What you see here is Channel 13's new project to deliver help to consumers in the metropolitan areas in two ways. First, there's this help center at WNET. It's staffed by a team of NYU law students who are here every weekday from 10 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon to help you resolve your consumer hassles. Now, as you can see, they're at the phones right now. So if you have a problem, you can call them. The number is 212 26255 Five, five. The other form of help is the show you're watching, the video extension of these telephone lines where we'll use our cameras to chase down a number of your complaints. Now, last week we promised that at the top of every show, at the beginning of every show, we'd give you the score on how the students and the volunteers are doing in clearing up your problems. Well, just prior to last week's broadcast, we were getting about 30 cases a day, and the students were winning about 80% of them. Now our caseload has doubled. Ever since that first show, and we did the expose on pyramid sales schemes like Holiday Magic, Best Line, Dare to be Great, you remember them. We asked people then who'd been ripped off by these chain operators to call us and blow the whistle, and our telephones almost blew right off the walls. We got such a response that we're still tabulating the results, and we'll have a full report on that impact next week. Right now, it's safe to say that the students are handling about 300 complaints every five days. And those very same complaints will give us the lead for upcoming shows. So when you call help, you're the producers and you're the directors. Tonight's program is really a good example. We had no idea, no real idea, on the depth of the problem with private vocational schools until we got a call from this guy. His name is Don Darson. He lives out on Coney Island. Don told one of our law students that he'd enrolled in a correspondence course that was offered by the North American School of Conservation. Now, it was a course that guaranteed him a job on completion as a wildlife management aide. Now, Don paid for this course, 100 lessons, $430 with a government student loan. He got high marks. He graduated with honors. Then he sent out job applications, more than 100 of them, to forestry and conservation agencies across the country. Now, as you'd suspect, every one of them turned them down. They told him that to get wildlife management work, you have to have a college degree or equivalency, and his mail-order diploma wasn't worth the paper it was engraved on. That's what they told him. Today, Don Dorsey has a job as a trainee sheet metal worker. He's disappointed. He's angry at the broken promises, and he thinks the government should get its money back. We agree. 
and the law students here are trying to get North America, and that's the company that he signed up with, to respond. Now, as time went by over the next several weeks, we found out that Don Darcy wasn't alone. He certainly wasn't alone. He wasn't the only dissatisfied consumer of private vocational training. In the next month, we got a total of 22 complaints in the area of computer programming. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven computer programming. Heavy equipment schools, one, two, three, four, five, six. Private nurses' aid studies, two, four, five. And then we had individual complaints against modeling, accounting schools, secretarial work, refrigeration repair, real estate brokerage, and airline stewardess training. In nine out of ten cases, the gripe was exactly the same. The callers had paid good money, in most cases between $200 and $1,000, to schools that had promised them jobs on graduation. And these were promises that the school simply couldn't deliver on. What we found out was that the calls we'd received represented really only the tip of an iceberg. We checked with the regional office of the Federal Trade Commission and found out that they've received more than 500 complaints in the past year against private vocational schools. In fact, last summer in August, the FTC launched a nationwide campaign to halt what it termed deceptive advertising and other unfair practices of some of these private vocational schools. The City of New York Department of Consumer Affairs ranks the private job training fraud as the second biggest swindle, consumer swindle, after our old friend Pyramid Sales. And we found out that these questionable vocational schools aren't only hurting the job seeker. It turns out, for instance, that the Veterans Administration, the VA, paid $381 million of our tax money last year so that ex-GIs could enroll in these vocational schools. Yet in the five-year period from 1966 to 1971, an incredible 75% of all the vets receiving benefits dropped out of these correspondence training courses. And it all wasn't the student's fault. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. And what's worse, three-quarters of all federally insured HEW student loan defaults have been paid for students from vocational schools. So like in the case of Don Darcy, not only has he lost, we've all lost tax money. We've heard the alarming numbers. Now let's meet some of the victims of these statistics, flesh and blood instead of numbers. This report was produced and narrated by Richard Kotuk. Joyce Cradle is a graduate of the New York Training Center, a vocational school that says it trains women to become nurses' aides and promises to get them jobs. But after five months and $300, Joyce Cradle is working as a maid on Manhattan's east side. Since I was a kid, the only thing I really wanted to be was a nurse. <laughs> like, it makes me want to cry after three years, you know. They promised us jobs in the various hospitals. You know, we found out that after some of the students that we were in before, you know, they graduated and they got diplomas and they found they couldn't get jobs or anything. They didn't do anything that they promised. The fact is that every city-run hospital trains its own nurses' aides for free and they hire from their own trainees. At one city hospital, Governor, on Manhattan's Lower East Side, we asked Grace Matsunaga, director of nurses' training, whether the kind of private schooling Joyce received was necessary to get a job. Well, it's not at all necessary. In fact, we do not recognize anybody who, who's tra anybody who receives training from a private agency. We do our own training. So that, in a sense, it can be, it's a waste of money. They dip me out of uh, money, my time, and out of a career that I so desperately wanted, you know, it's something that I wanted more than next to life. I wanted this, and I still do, but, you know, we're talking about that time in my life. They just wiped it out. It's just not there anymore, and there's nothing that can be done about it. Joyce Cradle isn't the only woman who's been taken in by NYTC. More than 450 complaints have been filed against the school most by women who've been guaranteed but haven't received jobs. And of the 4,000 students who've enrolled since 1969 and who've paid over $200,000, not one has been placed by the school in a hospital job. The women are lured to the school by deceptive advertising. This ad, which states hospitals need help, was actually published during a citywide job freeze on nurses' aid jobs. Earn top money is equally misleading, as nurses' aides' positions are the lowest paying staff jobs in a hospital. New York Training Center went as far as to provide students with what they called a complete and confidential list of all hospitals that either have called us for qualified nurses' aides 
or that are going to hire in the near future. The truth is, this list is a Xerox copy of the Bronx Yellow Pages listings under hospitals. In September, the State Department of Education revoked New York Training Center's license. And pending their current attempt to open the school under a new name, it will be shut down. But this is the first time the state has revoked a vocational school license or even held a hearing in 35 years. And in New York State, where there are 327 private vocational schools with 68,000 students, many more of the same kinds of abuses are currently going on. This commercial can change your life. TV stations broadcast a steady stream of commercials like this one that promise vocational school graduates big incomes as drivers of tractor trailers. But basically, most of the jobs the schools say they train you for just don't exist. Tractor trailer drivers are in demand. They enjoy good pay and a good future. Wouldn't you like to work outdoors and be able to drive a tractor trailer? Let Interstate train you to drive a tractor trailer. One company, Interstate Tractor Trailer Training, which also trained men to operate heavy equipment, was barred by a New York County Supreme Court from promising employment and earnings from jobs. The company, which was forced to refund students more than $50,000, went out of business, but re-emerged with a new name, Interstate Transportation Trainers. And the current interstate operation doesn't seem to have changed at all. Who's there? That's Jack. Oh. In order to try and determine whether Interstate is now breaking state education department regulations in terms of job and salary promises, Consumer Help installed a hidden camera in the apartment of an investigator for the Department of Consumer Affairs. The investigator had spoken with and made an appointment for an Interstate salesman to come to his home. The salesman expected to receive $95 down on the $445 course. The third person in the room is the investigator's brother. He'll get a job the minute he gets out of school. We'll place him. We can place him anywhere in the country. I mean, he'll get a job for sure in three weeks, though. Like paying, uh, I don't know what you said. 250 and 300. 300 dollars? We have to get 250. Oh, let me explain it this way. Okay. He gets six dollars an hour. That's minimum. Now, if he works a 40-hour week, that's 240 right there. Most of the fellas work at least 10 hours overtime. That's where I get the 250 from because they have time and a half. That's it. Wow. I thought, like, um, you had to be in, in a union. He to gets, get after 30 days, he gets in the union. He gets so, in the Teamsters, 3 or 15. So you mean, like, in, in three weeks, he could he could be working, and then 30, 30 days, days after that? Right, and that gives him Blue Cross Blue Shield two weeks after a year and the whole thing. And <laughs> just a very strong union. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, uh... And he, he automatically can get in? I mean, like, I know... Automatically. I mean, uh, We'll get a job. Because over the years, you... We'll get a job. You place everybody? Everybody. But it's not at all easy to get a job as a tractor-trailer driver in New York. Out at the Maspeth Queens Terminal of the St. Johnsbury Trucking Company, we asked Teamster President Louis J. Alamena about the job prospects for graduates of schools like Interstate. In the last two years, we've had a serious problem with unemployment. Prior to 1971, employers were looking for job applicants all over the city of New York. But since about January of 1971, we've had unemployment problems. We approximately have about 150 tractor-trailer chauffeurs out of work right now. I don't see how any of these schools could promise Teamster membership that a man becomes a member in our union unless he can get a job first, because we do not take a member or an applicant for membership until a man has a steady job in this industry. Alamina added that in the next few months, with the fuel shortage coming on, the tractor-trailer job market should be even tougher to crack. My advice to the average individual that wants to be a tractor-trailer chauffeur should apply for a job at the platform level, where you be a platform employee for a short period of time to learn how to load trucks. In our own local union, we have an upgrading program for our own members in the local union, where we upgrade a straight job driver to a tractor trailer and a platform employee to a straight job. I think these schools are a complete waste of time. Everybody starts in, out, in, ready and go. Out, in, out, in, kick, point. This is Glamour Manor. 
the Greystowns Air Career School at Glen Cove on Long Island's North Shore. It's where 115 young women are enrolled in the course of study that promises to train them for jobs with the airlines. Each of them pays over $2,000 for a program that in terms of getting them an airline job will probably prove worthless. Without exception, the airlines insist on training their own personnel and then hiring from the people they train. And don't kick from the back. I want to be a stewardess. And I feel that I can be a good stewardess because it's something that I really want, you know, from inside. It's not really the job or the money or anything, but it's just something I feel I want to do. You know, it'll help me a lot. and help, I feel I can help others. There's room for advancement in the airlines and a chance to travel. And that's mostly what I want from this school. <laughs> well, I hope I get a job out of here. And I just, I'm not sure if I want to be a reservationist or a stewardess, but I think I'd rather be the stewardess right now because it's more, it's an exciting life. You don't have to sit around and do just behind a counter all day. And I'm going to work hard to be the best that I can. So it's a goal, and I know the school will help me, you know, every way they can. Will the school help you get a job? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That's what I was told. That's what Renee Fisher, a 21-year-old graduate of Grace Downs, was also told. But after applying without success at United, TWA, Allegheny, Delta, and Alitalia, Renee is working in a shoe store in Yonkers. When I went for the interview to Grace Downs, I was 17. I was in my senior year of high school. They told me that I was too young to take their eight-week course, which was only $800. And instead, I had to pay $2,000, which included secretarial modeling. And I just wanted to learn about the airlines, not secretarial. And I told them that. And they said to me, no, it's better for you to take the the uh, one-year course, which consists of three-in-one courses, what they called it. So I took that, and I wound up being a receptionist. Under the coat, we have a very chic empire-style gown. Also Courses at Glamour color. Manor include Straps modeling, travel, the characteristics of a lady, straight. development of self-confidence, posture improvement, graceful walking, nail care, slimnastics, known also as huff and puff, typing, shorthand, and air career. Now, since we're going over water, this is going to be your life jacket. And when you get this, when she starts with this part of the announcement, you want to have it so that it's going to go right over your head. Now, for some reason, if this did not inflate, it can orally be inflated right here. So, Patty, you don't mind, do you? We'll blow you up. Okay. How's that? Comfortable? <laughs> Too tight? Consumer Help contacted six of the leading airlines and found that none of them had hired any Grace Downs graduates to work as stewardesses last year. And because the airline job market is so tight, right now the airlines aren't even accepting applicants into their own training programs. I expected her to graduate knowing something about the airline, going to a job which was supplied for her from the school and getting the job and knowing what it's all about. In the meantime, when she did go to a job on her own, which she was not sent from the, sp uh, from the school, when she went uh, to any airline by on her own, they said, Grace Downs doesn't mean a thing to us because we have to retrain you anyway. You wasted your, ta uh, your time and you wasted your money by going to the school. That charge now, I could have done so much more with the $2,000 than just giving it to Grace Down for her to live in a big mansion. We try to turn out the, ve the best possible product we can. It's, it's a business with a heart. I mean, in the school business, you don't go home and lock your office door. It's a 24-hour thing because you have to realize we're dealing with people, young lives. We care a great deal about these young lives. It says on top of their advertising, free lifetime placement, but it didn't too, do too much good for me. I got one placement in a, as a receptionist on Park Avenue. That's all. When I went back to them, uh, they told me they didn't have any jobs open or they'll try for me. But they didn't try very hard. 
Because of this kind of advertising, Grace Downs has begun to have its problems with the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs. In fact, the school recently signed an agreement to stop what the department calls false and deceptive advertising. And Grace Downs has agreed to tell recent graduates they can have at least some of their money back if they've been misled by the school. Letters are being sent to many students which in part read, some of our students may have been misled by statements in our advertising and brochures which may have implied that Grace Downs graduates were assured of obtaining jobs. Grace Downs in no way promises or guarantees to find you an airline's job when you graduate. One of our brochures stated that we placed 97 percent of our girls in airline jobs over the past 10 years. In reality, we have placed approximately 20 percent in the past two years. And in spite of their own little publicized admissions, Grace Downs keeps pulling in cash and putting out, at best, persons bound for disappointment when they find the jobs they were hoping to get are an illusion. Right, I've Zorba the Greek. Now, the major question in my mind after seeing that report is how can these schools continue to get away with promising jobs that they really can't deliver? Now, with us tonight to respond to that question and others are two of the men responsible for regulating private vocational schools in Greta, New York. First, Dr. John Leslie, who's the Director of Special Occupational Services for the New York State Department of Education, and John Radvany, the Deputy Assistant Commissioner of Vocational Education for the State of New Jersey. Now, I've got to know, after seeing that film, how can gross misrepresentations like the kind we've seen tonight continue to take place? I mean, aren't your agencies in existence to prevent that? Well, I don't really know what the answer is, but uh, fundamentally, the Department of Education operates or administers a law which licenses private vocational schools. And part of that licensing process is a review of their advertising. Another very important point is that they cannot guarantee placement. They cannot guarantee jobs. But apparently they are. But apparently doing. they do. I guess the only way that I can respond to that would be that if these things do occur, that the individual communicate with the Department of Education, communicate with me, and we will take what steps are necessary to have this practice discontinued. John, Dr. Lissy, one of the problems I see is that your agencies are almost invisible to the public. Nobody even knows that you exist. <laughs> I would like to think that uh, New Jersey, we have done somewhat of an adequate job in policing the program. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't complaints. There probably are complaints. Some of them are probably legitimate ones. A great many of the complaints are adjudicated before they ever reach the Attorney General's office. I have to ask you this question. In the hidden camera sequence, we had a guy from Interstate Tractor Trailer. He came here from New Jersey. He came to New York State from New Jersey to make a sales pitch. Now, does your agency have sufficient staff, whether this guy is coming across the Hudson River to talk this trash or whether he's doing it in Newark or Jersey City or Trenton, do you have sufficient people to regulate these guys? We could use more staff. We have a request in the budget which begins April 1st for an additional professional position. Uh, we have presently five field men and a bureau chief and we hope to add one more in right. April 1st. I'm doing some quick mathematics with 377 schools and five field men. That works out to five, isn't it, to that six, 70 schools apiece. They run seven, <laughs> 70, schools 70, for each inspection. 70 to 80 to 90 schools per individual. That's too much. Dr. Leslie, are you aware that of the 29,000 graduates from vocational schools last year, only 12,000 are even employed? And mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't that indicate to you that something is drastically well, wrong? Those are placement data from the schools. Uh, they're incomplete because lots of times people get jobs on their own without letting the school know uh, that they have gotten jobs. There are also people who uh, don't necessarily want to go to work right away after they finish their training program. Uh, I don't think any percentage is a good percentage unless it's a hundred percent but I know that that's not going to happen and I think also the 
job placements from these schools has been uh, reflective of general economic conditions and the labor market in general. I'd just like to add that what you have selected there ha are, are uh, perhaps outstanding examples of the negative side of the spectrum. There are probably, and I would hope that there are many, many more on the positive side of the spectrum. I think we have to keep in mind that private schools may, do make a very definite contribution to the, to the society that it serves. I think you have to realize that uh, private schools are tax contributors, not tax users. Private schools pay property taxes. They're subject to all local and federal tax uh, statutes. They're not exempt from this. So I think that they are making a contribution. I think that that in itself is not enough to, to allow us to sit back and say we're doing a great job. I don't think we are until we track down the ones that are the violators. Just considering the placement problem alone, there seems to be considerable distance between what these gentlemen perceive to be a pretty well-regulated industry, apparently, and what we see as an educational business in serious need of increased policing. Now, let me suggest, gentlemen, that the fact that in one month we received private vocational school complaints equal to half the annual caseload in New Jersey, 20% of the annual caseload here in New York may suggest, at least it does to me, that there aren't enough consumers who know about the existence of your agencies and they don't know that you're the place to go to for vocational school problems. They have to know and we have to start shedding some light not only on the problems but on the fact that your agencies exist to take care of these problems. I know, whether you admit it or not, that both your divisions need larger staffs to uh, to deal with the, uh, what we think is a drastic problem and one of the most severe consumer problems in this whole area. Let's find out how the people in the audience feel about it. I mean, if you have a problem with a private vocational school, you can call us here at Helpline. Call them or call us. Our number is 212-262-5555. Now call us any day this week. Let's see what kind of response we get by vigorously asking for complaints instead of staying invisible. Perhaps we'll discover that, as we think, the vocational school issue is more of a problem than apparently the Department of Education in New Jersey and New York feels. Tune in for the results. Now we'll be back with more help right after this. This man could take several hundred dollars of your money and give you nothing. Or he might give you good training for a good job. He's a salesman for a vocational school. Before you sign any contract, find out if the school's training will help you get a job. Talk to employers, former school students, and military or high school counselors. For a free helpful guidebook, write Department 1, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. I have a little commercial for this non-commercial show. Now, you probably don't realize it, but this is the second in what may well be a series of only six of these help shows, limited funding being what it is, Channel 13 being as broke as it always is. They can only afford to bring you help up through the end of the year. Now, we hope between today and the end of December, someone, some rich guy comes up with the bread or some generous foundation gives us enough, enough help, gives us help, enough help to keep us coming to you indefinitely. Now, whether that happens may well be a function of how you, the audience, responds to what we're trying to do here. If you want to see the Consumer Help Center and this help show, keep on keeping on. Send us a letter. We have an address, special address, write down. Consumer Save Help, WNET 304 West 58th Street, New York 10019. Save Help, WNET 304 West 58th Street, New York, New York 10019. Now for the help team of law students and volunteers. Turn around, team. Say good night. I'm Geraldo Rivera. Take it easy. In my resume, what will I say about the games I had to play? <laughs>